Come on, doesn't it feel like liberty in the room? Come on, doesn't it feel like victory in the house? Come on, somebody lift up the name of Jesus and praise him. Come on, praise him because we're overcomers. Come on, praise him because we're victorious in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. If you're thankful to be in church on a Monday night, somebody clap your hands unto the Lord and love him. Come on, come on. He's worthy to be praised. Thanks be to God that always causeth us to triumph. I, I, I want to tell you right now in the Holy Ghost, there's some things that the adversary is limited in his ability to attack and overtake you. With God's permission, he may fight against you. With God's permission, he may war against you. God has to give him jurisdiction to even touch you. Anybody remember Job? He has to give the adversary jurisdiction to touch you. But thanks be to God which always causeth us. He makes us victorious. Whether you like it or not, you are a child of God. Come on, there's nothing the adversary can do. I feel the, there's nothing he can say. There's nothing he can come up with. Uh, there's, no, there's no battle. If you lose the battle, we will win the war. I wish somebody was shouting on the Monday. Come on, the adversary is nervous right now. Come on, some of you are on the verge, on the brink. On the precipice, come on, come on, somebody's got the adversary. Come on, your days of losing are over. Come on, your weeks of weariness are over. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Amen, who says you can't have church on a Monday? Amen. Judges 14 and verse 14 for your consideration tonight. Amen. And also be bringing you to Judges 14 and verse number 18. Amen. Good to see Bishop in the house tonight. Amen. Welcome back home. We love all the home folks. Amen. We honor faithful people. God honors and blesses the faithful people of God. So much, much honor for all of us that have made the effort to come to service on an off night after a long day of Monday work and getting back on the mule. It is not easy to come to church when you're tired. Amen. But I promise you, I promise you the spirit is willing. Amen. And I just want more of what the Holy Ghost has been doing. Come on, anybody feel like revival is in the land? As quickly as I can get through this text, I want to give you the context of these verses, verses of Scripture tonight. If you recall the mighty man, the judge of the land of Israel by the name of Samson. Somebody shout Samson. Samson, Samson is a very well-known Bible character for many people. His supernatural feats of strength. His, his Herculean ability to pick up gates and kill thousands of men with his bare hands, essentially, doing what only God can do through a man. But Samson was also known for having extremely high points in his life. And Samson was known for having extremely low points in his life. And I know we can scrutinize Samson, but can I tell you, we all know that life is a roller coaster. We all have days where we're up, and we all have days where we're down. Somebody say amen. amen. But God has a way of using the moments of low points 
as a place of strength. Sometimes you won't pray unless you get low enough to pray. But while you're down there, just hit those knees and call upon the name of Jesus and everything's going to be all right. Come on, anybody thankful we can still call upon the name of the Lord. And Samson was going down to Timnath because he fell in love with a Philistine woman there. His parents were not fond of the relationship, though they did not realize that God somehow had his hand in this to overthrow the Philistines. And so an arrangement for a marriage, a wedding was made. And in the day, the custom of the time is they would prepare a feast prior to the wedding, seven days to be exact, eating and drinking. And they, they, would, they would have festivities of those times. This was the customs of the Philistines. And so Samson's parents gathered 30 companions or groomsmen. Not much has changed in weddings. So Samson had 30 groomsmen. How would you like that kind of wedding? That's a big old wedding. 30 companions. And so Samson, sitting down with his companions, he issued them a riddle. And we're going to get to that deeper. But I want to preach from this riddle tonight. Samson issued a riddle to his companions. And the riddle was a wager, a bet, if you will, that if they could not get the riddle right, then they would owe him 30 sheets or 30 shirts and 30 garments, 30 arrayments of clothing if they could not get it right in seven days. And so Samson said this, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Somebody shout sweetness. And they could not, for three days, they could not figure out what this riddle meant. But they pressed the fiance of Samson, begging her to tell them the secret. They threatened to kill her. That's how serious they were about this bet. My God, somebody was serious about gambling. They threatened to kill the wife of Samson, the future wife. And so when they found out the secret, they eased over to Samson in verse 18. And they wanted to subliminally, subliminally let him know that they figured out his secret, the riddle. They said, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? Tonight, I want to preach something the Holy Ghost has been moving. Anybody feel like God's been moving in this revival? Come on, anybody feeling stronger? Come on, there's been some strength. There's been some, there's been some power you're getting a hold of. And I just want to tell you, God is not done yet. And the adversary's got a right to be nervous. Come on, I wish you would give God praise if you feel victorious. Come on, if you feel like you're coming out of your troubles, you're coming out of your darkness, you feel like God's doing something, I want you to give God high praise. Come on, it gets sweeter and sweeter. It gets better and better. Come on, God is greater and great. He's great to be praised. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody turn to your neighbor and said, it gets better than this. Come on, turn to your other neighbor and says, it gets sweeter and sweeter. Amen. Tonight, I want to preach with the help of the Holy Ghost from this question, what is sweeter than honey? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. What is sweeter? Somebody shout sweeter. What is sweeter than honey? I've taken the time to give you some backstory on this tale of Sam Samson and the riddle that he issued to his companions now, I, I would admittedly tell you tonight that when I was born, somehow I was missing the DNA molecular structure that causes your brain to have a sense of humor. See? Case in point, that was supposed to be a joke. 
God did not give me the inherent ability to be funny. And I've always been an overanalyzer of jokes. Not only are my jokes not funny, but I, I have a hard time, and my wife can tell you this, when she first met me, she, one day she asked me, do you ever laugh? Because I was just way too serious. <laughs> and part of that is I have some weird thought process that goes on in my mind that when someone is telling a joke, in order for the joke to be funny to me, the joke has to make sense. And you know what I'm telling you, some jokes that make absolutely no sense. Somebody say amen, I hope you preach it with me right now. Why did the chicken cross the road and the, the punchline that follows makes absolutely no sense? But riddles are a little bit different. Riddles are not necessarily meant to be funny. In fact, riddles are meant to make you think. There's supposed to be some, some point of wisdom within the riddle that makes you ponder. Riddles are supposed to be hard. They're not supposed to be easily figured out. They're, they're supposed to have some logical framing. There's, some, there's something about riddles that there is wisdom within riddles. And so Samson told this riddle, but in order for you to understand the riddle, you must understand how this riddle came about. And so I've asked Pastor Ryder to help me read tonight because we got to get to work in the morning. We don't have all night to get through this sermon. But the story of Samson unfolds as he's going down to Timnath. He's going to meet his fiance. He's going, he's going to this feast. And something happens in the story that if you miss this, you will miss the riddle. Anybody ready to figure out the riddle tonight? Yes, sir. And so I want you to read verse 5. We're going to walk through this. Verse 5 of verse 14. This is what transpired as Samson was on his way to meet his future wife in Timnath. Read, please. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. Yes. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Samson is on his way. He's journeying down to Timnath. And the Bible says that as he was going down by the roadside, the Bible says that a roaring lion, somebody shout lion. I feel my help in the house right now. Somebody shout lion. A roaring lion came out against him. Now, I, I just want to stop right there. I, I, I just got to push the pause button and tell you the adversary, your adversary, the Bible says, is walking about to and fro as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But can I tell somebody the adversary might have it in for you, but his bark is not as big as his bite. Can I tell you that he's got a loud mouth and he can't back it up, but but we serve a God that has the ability to shut the mouth. Oh, I wish somebody feel what I feel. We serve a God that when Daniel got down in the lion's den and he said, God, there's lions roaring against me. God said, hang on in there, Daniel. I've got an angel that's going to shut the mouth. Hey, the adversary can talk. He can get in your ears. He can lie to you all week long. But the devil's a liar and he can't. We serve a God that's greater. We serve a God that's mighty. He's a roaring lion, but my God, my God is greater. By anybody feel the Holy Ghost? So Samson is walking, and a roaring lion comes out against him. Now, the, when the word of God is made applicable to us, that's when the word of God works. So I'm preaching about Samson, but I'm really not preaching about Samson. I'm preaching about you. Because every day you wake up, there's adversaries trying to destroy your family, trying to steal your peace, trying to, I'm, anybody hear me right now, trying to take your joy roaring against you. But Samson, Samson had an advantage. 
Read, please. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the Bible says that when the lion came against him, I, I don't know if you're waiting for me to start preaching, but I'm preaching already. When the lion came against him, the Bible says uh, that the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Can I tell you, that's a good idea and a good reason to show up on Monday nights. Uh, because when you throw up your hands uh, and you begin to pray, uh, the adversaries that are at war against you, uh, the spirit of the Lord begins to come uh, and Hey, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, uh, David said, I can run through a wall uh, and I can storm through a troop. Uh, I can leap over a wall and storm. Hey, when the gates of hell uh, come against you, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord raises a standard. Can I tell you, don't feel like that you are inebriated in weakness uh, when you open up your mouth and begin to pray. Uh, there is a supernatural intervention uh, that begins to happen on your behalf uh, when the adversary uh, is roaring, uh, when the adversary uh, is warring, uh, when the enemy is fighting. Uh, you've got the spirit. I wish somebody wasn't making me work too hard tonight. Uh, when you know not what to pray for as we ought, uh, the Spirit uh, maketh intercession uh, for the saints. Uh, can I tell you, when you start to pray, uh, the adversary uh, gets nervous. Yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody still on board? Yes, I got to calm down. I'm getting way too excited. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson Reed, please. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. The Bible says that he grabbed a hold of the lion. I want to tell somebody right now what's been happening around here on Sunday. Uh, I'll tell you why the enemy is backed up in a corner. Uh, because some of you have been battling stuff for weeks and months uh, and even years. Uh, but yesterday something got in your spirit uh, and something got in your heart. Uh, and you grabbed a hold of it. Uh, and you said, I'm not going to battle with this no more. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not. Hey, I got I to gotta tell you sometimes uh, you just got to get a hold of the stuff uh, that's getting a hold of you. Hey, sometimes you just got to grab the lion by the beard uh, and say, today is the last day. Uh, I'm battling with depression. Uh, tonight's the last night. Uh, I'm losing one ounce of sleep. Uh, today. The adversary is not nervous until you get mad uh, when you said I, I had enough uh, all the way up to here. Uh, I'm taking my troubles to the altar. Uh, I'm taking my problems to Jesus. Uh, I'm bringing my family before the throne. Uh, I'm oh, Samson took that lion in his bare hands uh, and he ripped him as if he would rip uh, a kid. And the Bible says uh, that when he ripped that lion with his bare hands, uh, the Bible says that he did not tell his father and his mother what he'd done. Don't miss a small point because I know this looks like a victorious moment in Samson's life. But this is actually a very low moment because according to the Nazarite vial, vow, according to the letter of the consecration of the law he was supposed to live, Samson was not supposed to drink of strong drink. Samson was not supposed to cut the locks of his hair. And Samson, according to the Nazarite law, was not supposed to touch the things that were dead. Which means he's now killed a lion with his bare hands and now he's got a dead body and blood on his hands. Verse 7, please. And he went down and talked with the woman and, yeah. she, and she pleased mm -hmm. Samson well. Keep reading, please. And after a time he returned to take her. Yes. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. Yes. And behold, there was a swarm of bees. Stop right there. So all of a sudden, Samson, after killing this lion, blood on his hands, he can't tell his mom and dad the secret. He can't tell them the secret. And so he goes and visits with this woman. And the Bible says that the next day he went by and curiosity got the best of him. You remember I said he was not supposed to be hanging around dead things. But they said curiosity killed the cat. 
That was supposed to be another joke, but you didn't get it. The Samson, the lion, killed, cat. My God, I, I know that's why he made me a preacher, not a comedian. Curiosity, his curiosity got the best of him. And so he wanted to see this carcass of this lion because I got to tell you, if you kill a lion with bare hands, you better believe I'm going to see it the next day. I just these these hands are certified. Samson is curious. He wants to go see this carcass. But the Bible says that when he goes to see the carcass, that the process of biology has already taken place and the rotting of the carcass is already in motion. And inside of the carcass of the lion, the Bible says that a group in a congregation of bees are now swarming in the carcass. And where there's bees, there's honey. So the Bible says that within the carcass there were bees and within the carcass of the lion there was honey within that carcass. But this is where the story gets good. Can you read verse 9? I know I didn't give it to you, but can you read it for me? He took, and he took thereof in his hands yes. and went on eating yes. and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat. So Samson reaches his hand in the carcass. I hope I, I have I lost anybody yet. We still have to get to the riddle. He reaches his hand in the carcass. He gets a handful of honey. He goes to eat it. The honey obviously was so good, he wanted to give some to his mother and his father. And so he gives them honey. But guess what, Samson? You still can't tell your secret. Because he can't tell his mother and his father that he's got honey from a dead lion. Wow. And so goes the riddle. Yeah. Samson's carrying the weight of a secret. Now, I don't know how secrets work around here. <laughs> but you know how it is. You tell somebody, hey, let me, can, I, can I tell you a secret? I'm going to meddle a little bit, just a little bit. Can I, can I tell you a secret? Brother Luke, can I tell you a secret? So and so did such and such with such and such on such and such. Can you believe that? But don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Three hours later, Brother Luke calls me on the phone. Hey, you want to hear a secret? Such and such did such and such with such and such on such and such. Don't tell nobody. I was the one told you. I told you don't tell nobody. How are you going to come tell me a secret? Because it's hard to keep a secret. And so Samson is wrestling with this secret on the inside. He's battling. I know you're wondering what I'm going to preach. I promise you it gets better than this. He's wrestling with this secret, and he has this urge, I have to tell somebody, but how am I going to tell him? I can't tell somebody because surely God's not pleased, and surely if my parents find out, surely I can't tell my secret, and so I know. I'll tell a riddle. He said, hey, guys, I got a secret. I got a riddle. I want, I want you to figure this out. See if you can figure this out. Because this riddle, if it was not in the word of God, is so hard. None of us would ever figure it out. I don't care how smart you are. How in the world can you make sense of out of the eater came forth meat and out of the strong came forth sweetness? Ain't no way you figuring that out. Somebody said, no, you would not. 
I don't care what your IQ is. You are not figuring out out of the eater came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. And for three days, they could not figure out the riddle. And they said, we can't lose this bet. We've got to press his fiance. We've got to get this answer. We've got to find out this secret because we're going to lose. We can't, we can't figure out this riddle. This is too hard. What in the world does that mean? Out of the, out of the eater came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. Nobody knows what the riddle means. So they found out the secret. They asked his fiance the answer to the riddle. And she told them the story of how Samson rent the lion with his bare hands. And he came back by the way and there was a carcass with bees and honey was in there. And so the Bible says that before the sun went down on the seventh day, they went to Samson. And they could not tell Samson that they knew his secret. Because he would have known how they found out. And so they answered Samson's riddle with a riddle. Is this, is this all right tonight? Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. They said, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And it's at this point Samson is furious because he knows that there's no way they would have figured out what he did with the lion by the way, the honey and the carcass. But this riddle is really a riddle to me because his companions, Bishop, they never answered the question. Now, I don't, know, I don't know how you answer questions, but you can't answer a question with a question. Samson said, out of the eater came forth meat, out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they said, what is sweeter than honey and what, the, what is stronger than a lion? And so for the next 17 minutes, I want to ask you, what is sweeter than honey? Somebody shout honey. Anybody ready? Anybody ready? Yes, sir. What is sweeter than honey? Can I tell you that when Samson is by the way and the, and the lion roars against him, there's something transpired by the way that I hope it helps somebody on a Monday night because Samson is in an all-out war. He's in a fight. He's in a tussle with something that was trying to attack him. Can I tell somebody that when the adversary is warring against you, you got to know what kind of power lies within you because greater is he that's within me than he that is in the world world. Can I tell you that when the adversary comes against you, you don't have a reason to run. You don't have a reason to cry. You don't have a reason to tuck your tail. You don't Hey, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey, I've got no reason to be depressed. I've got the Holy Ghost. Just like the Bible says, I've got the power of God way on the inside of me. Hey, you ought to walk in victory on a Tuesday morning and tell the adversary, I'm not afraid of lions. I'm not afraid of the adversary. There's a God living on. I wish somebody would give God praise. Come on, I wish somebody would give God praise. Hey, I come to tell you on a Monday night, you've got to get boldness in your spirit. If you've been battling with lust, you got to get boldness in your spirit. If you've been battling with depression, you got to get boldness in your spirit. If you've been weighed down. Uh, you got to get mad at the stuff that's attacking you. You've got to get, I'm telling somebody in the Holy Ghost, you've got to get an attitude in your spirit to say, I refuse to die by the roadside from the attacks on my mind from the adversary. I refuse to die by the wayside from the attacks on my family, on my children, on my family. Come on, somebody's not mad enough. I pray you will let the Holy Ghost unction get a hold of you. I pray a Holy Ghost, I pray something on the inside of you like Jesus walking in the temple turning over tables. And you said enough, enough, enough. Anybody feel what I'm preaching right now? 
you got to get to the point that you tell the adversary that enough is enough. And can I tell you something powerful about what transpired by the road? Because as Samson destroyed this lion with his bare hands, as Samson went by the way to evaluate the carcass, something beautiful came out of a low moment in his life. Can I tell you, when you get to the lowest of the lowest of the low, I come to tell you, all things work together for the good you might feel low but can I tell you that out of the eater came forth meat and out of the strong there's something sweet that can come out of your weakness because his strength his strength is made perfect in my weakness when I'm weak he's strong out of the Hey, that's why you got to lift up your hands. That's why you got to open up your mouth. That's why you got to clap your hands and praise God. When he inhabits the praises of his people, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord gets upon you. And Samson's curiosity went back to that lion. And the Bible says he got a handful of honey and he put it to his mouth. And honey is sweet. But what is sweeter than honey? That's the question. Somebody shout honey. Honey is sweet. But what is sweeter than honey? And the companions never answered the question. But can I answer it for you right now? Can I just give you the answer? I know, you, I know I've had you on the ledge the whole time, but can I give you the answer on what's sweeter than honey? The only thing that made the honey from that honeycomb sweet. Can I tell you what made the honey even sweeter? The fact that the honey was a result of the victory that Samson won from the adversary that came against him. The only thing that made that honey sweeter was the fact that it was the... It was the honey that came out of an apostolic prayer meeting on a Sunday night that I got victory in my family and I, I and I'm not looking back. I come to tell you, I, I know something that's sweeter than honey. What's sweeter than honey is when you had a prayer on your prayer list and God scratches it off. Oh, I wish somebody would shout right now. I'll tell you what's sweeter than honey. When the adversary's been kicking your teeth in and you finally get victory over the lion and you finally get victory over the enemy, when you... I wish somebody was shouting, I'll tell you what's sweeter than honey. When you get your joy back, that's sweeter than honey. When your children come back home, that's sweet. I wish somebody would taste it in the room. I'll tell you what's sweeter than honey. When every foe, when every adversary, when God breaks the shackles, when God breaks the chains, it's sweeter than honey. I wish somebody would praise God like it's sweet. I'll tell you what's sweeter. When you had cancer in your body and the spirit of God heals you, that's sweeter than honey. I'll tell you what's sweeter than honey. When there was no way and God made a way. Hey, that's something to shout about. Samson couldn't help it. He couldn't help himself when he realized there was a victory. I can't believe I just got a victory over the adversary that was trying to destroy me. When you get a victory over the adversary that was trying to end your life, that was trying to wreck your marriage, that was trying to break you down. When you get a victory over the adversary, that's sweeter. I wish somebody would praise God like it's sweeter. Come on, anybody got some prayers that you're praying? I just want to tell you nothing's impossible. If you keep on praying and God shows up with an answer, I promise you that tastes way better than honey ever did. When God begins to work, when God begins to do impossible things in your life, that's sweeter than honey. Can I tell you why, Brother Alan Michael, why I know that? He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
I just want to know if God's been good to anybody. I just want to know if God's been keeping you, if God's been strengthening you, if God's been helping you in your low points, in your high points. There's a God that's always there. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he's always good and his mercy endure forever. Oh, taste and see. Oh, that's sweeter than honey. David, David understood. Psalm night in Psalm 119. In Psalm 19, he said, he said, thy word, thy word. When you get a word of your spirit on the Monday night and you feel like you're feeling right now, David said, thy word is sweeter than the honey from a honeycomb. He said, oh my God. He said, when I was in depression uh, and the preacher started preaching uh, and the spirit of God started lifting me up, uh, he said, thy words uh, are unto me, to my taste. Uh, He said, it's sweeter, uh, it's sweeter, uh, it's sweeter than honey. Come on, I got a word for you in the room. Uh, You are not weak. Uh, You are not defeated. Uh, You are not going down. Uh, You are not depressed. Uh, You are not sick. Uh, Somebody shout sweeter. When God gives you victory over the things that have been trying to destroy you, that's sweeter than honey. The only thing that made the honey from that carcass sweet was that Samson knew that it came from the victory of his bare hands. But can I tell you something right now? Victory is something that is earned. Why? Because you have to fight for victory. No pun intended. Samson had to fight for victory. You have to fight for your family. You have to fight for your children. You have to fight for your sanity. You have to fight for your spirit. You have to fight for salvation. You have And the adversary If there's anything he doesn't want you to do, he he doesn't want you to taste of the honey. Is this all right tonight? I got 11 minutes and 13 seconds. I want you to hear me out. I know I didn't give you this, but can you get 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 24? The adversary would do everything he can to tell you that that victory you got on Sunday night, you ain't going to keep it. Somebody, see, you got quiet right there because he's already been talking to you. How you felt Sunday night, uh, that was just emotionalism. Uh, That was just an emotion. That was sensational. Uh, You were just feeling good. Uh, Can I tell you, the devil's doing nothing but lying uh, because he knows you got a hold of that mane uh, and you shaking him by the beard uh, and you telling him you just talking, you you just running your mouth. uh, You just saying a whole bunch of mess. uh, You just talking a whole bunch of nonsense. uh, The devil is a liar. uh, He's roaring and roaring. But God can close the mouth. He can shut the mouth. He can. Because all the adversary will try to do, he will convince you that staying weak is where you belong. Is this all right tonight? He would tell you that staying lonely by yourself in your room, not talking to nobody, is where you belong. He doesn't want you to get around the people of God because when you get in the congregation, there's a strength that's tossed flowing in the house. When you when you link up with somebody and you confess your faults one to another and you pray one for another, there's a healing that begins to flow. There's a virtue that begins to flow. There's a strength that begins. And so he wants to convince you to stay weak. Here it is. Read it for me. I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. Here it is. And the men of Israel were distressed that day. This is the children of Israel under the leadership of Saul, who has now, he has now been overtaken by an evil spirit. He's no longer God's man. But every word that comes out of the mouth of King Saul is guided by the voice of an evil spirit. Hear it. Keep reading. For Saul had adjured the people, saying, 
Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening. Yes. That I may be avenged on mine enemies. Watch this. Seth, Saul was fighting his enemies, uh, but he didn't realize that in his, uh, his ability uh, and his attempt to hang on to his kingdom, uh, his kingdom was crumbling down. Uh, and so he convinced the people to go on a fast when they were already weak. Read, please. So none of the people tasted any food. Keep going, keep going. And they all of the land came to a wood. Right. And there was honey upon the ground. Oh my, watch this. Hold on. Wait, wait. Stop. The Bible says that as the children of Israel, the army of God, they came to a wood. The Bible says that they came to a wood and there was honey. Somebody shout honey. honey. Shout it again. Shout honey. honey. There was honey on the ground. I just want to I just want to push the pause button and tell you right there when you show up to church there is so much mercy flowing in this room that God can forgive you and your mama too he can forgive everybody. Uh, there's enough grace. There's enough strength. Uh, there's enough power. Uh, hey, God's not short in his promises. Uh, there's enough blessing that he can pour it out uh, on your family uh, and my family. Uh, his arms are not short. Uh, his ears are not deaf. Uh, his hands are not weak. Uh, I come to tell you the God we serve, uh, there's always more than enough. Uh, he said, for he is able uh, to do exceeding uh, abundantly uh, above uh, all that you may ask or think. So can I tell you, can I tell you a secret right now? There's enough victory in this house for everybody. I wish you would feel what I just felt. I said there's enough victory in this room for everybody. But here it is. There's honey on the ground and watch this. When the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped. But can no man put his hand to his mouth. Can you imagine being weak, and you know how it is on a fast. Somebody say amen. amen. Unless you've been cheating. <laughs> you know when you're weak in body, you can smell Popeye's 10 miles away. And they come to a wood, weak in body. They feel weary. They feel overtaken. They feel, they feel shriveled up in their, in, their, in their strength. And the Bible says there was so much honey, it was dripping from the trees. Boy, I, anybody, I felt some revelation flow in the room just now. I come to tell you, if you just look up, there's just there's glory uh, that's just coming down. Uh, that's why when you lift up your hands, you feel something. Uh, it's just coming down from the heavens. Uh, he said, he said, Op I will open up the windows uh, of heaven uh, and I will pour out. Uh, it's running out, overflowing, uh, pressed down, shaking together uh, and running over. It's dripping. It's honey flowing. Uh, he said, you don't have to take manna tomorrow morning. Uh, it tastes like honey, but you don't have to hold it for the next day. He said, I got enough for everybody. I got enough for everybody. Jesus. Can you imagine seeing all that honey? Their mouth is watering, and they are listening to the voice of the adversary, an evil spirit yeah. that told them, you better not touch that honey. But watch this. Keep reading. Keep reading. But no man put his hand to his mouth, for the, for the people feared the oath. Yes. But when Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in an honeycomb. Watch this. And put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Jonathan, the son of Saul, was not there when the command was given by, God, by, by Saul to not eat of anything. And when they saw the honey, they didn't touch it. But Jonathan shows up, and he sees all of this honey dripping from the trees. And he did not hear the command of the adversary. He did not get the memo of the evil spirit. Can I tell you, if you stop listening to what the devil's telling you. Uh, there's some honey that's flowing uh, that you can get a hold of. Uh, you just got to ignore the memo. Uh, you got to ignore the message. Uh, you got to block the phone call. Uh, you got to... 
Hey, some of you are listening to the wrong people uh, trying to talk you out of your blessing, uh, trying to convince you to stay stuck uh, in your rut. Uh, but the devil's a liar. Uh, I'm getting out. Uh, I'm coming up. Uh, I'm getting the honey. Uh, what's sweeter? What's sweeter? There's too much honey flowing in the house uh, for you not to leave with victory. Uh, there's too much honey flowing in the room uh, for you not to leave with a breakthrough. Uh, there's too much honey flowing for you not to leave with a healing. Watch this. The Bible says he tasted the honey with a stick on a honeycomb and he put it to his mouth. Uh, and all of a sudden, Brother Allen, the Bible says uh, that his eyes were enlightened. What in the world was that? I'll tell you what that is, Jonathan. That's honey. And when you get a taste of the honey, there's some strength that you get in your spirit. You don't have to be weak. You don't have to be weighed down. You don't have to be burdened. You can take your troubles to the altar and take them off your shoulder. He said, cast your cares on me and take my burden. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, if you want to trade, I'll give you beauty for ashes. I'll give you the oil of joy for your morning. I'll give you. He said, I'll give you the garment of praise uh, for your spirit of heaviness. Uh, and you can get your dance back. Uh, and you can get your smile back. Uh, and you can get your hope back. Here's the good part. And I'm almost done. Anybody going to give me four minutes? I've been counting in my head. I got you. Here it is. That's the good part. Then answered one of the people and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath. They said, Jonathan, what are you doing? Did you not hear what Saul told us? You're not supposed to touch that honey. Oh, I feel, I feel a witness in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, if people, if people got the, the gall, the audacity, and the nerve to say, I can't believe you're going to church on Monday. You got to leave them kind of folks alone. I can't believe you. Why would you go on a fast? We just came off a fast. Are you going on another one? The adversary is always trying to convince you. No, if we're going to be weak, we're all going to be weak. Young people, I want you to hear me. If your friends are doing stuff they ain't got no business doing, don't back up for them and don't cover for them. I'm not hiding your secret. I'm not hiding your mess. We're not covering for you. You're going to be weak by yourself. I want victory in my life. I want anointing in my life. I want God's favor in my life. If you're going to be weak, stay weak. But I want to taste the honey. I want to see victory. I want to know the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see. I wish somebody would praise God a little louder. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Come on, somebody praise him a little, a little bit more. Come on, I feel something in the house. Come on, you don't have to leave here down. You don't have to leave here bogged down. You don't have, hey, you got to get a hold of the lion. You got to get a hold of the adversary. Give it to me. Good. Give it to me. But watch this. So Jonathan says, what are you guys talking about? Go. Read, read, read. Your father straightly charged the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. The people were weak. Read. Then Jonathan said, My father hath troubled the land. See, I pray you how mine eyes have been enlightened. He said, Why are you listening to that evil spirit? Yeah. He said, he, he, he is troubling us. He is tormenting us. He does not have our best interests in mind. Can I tell you, if people are trying to keep you from living right, they don't love you like they say they love you. If people are trying to convince you that this church is preaching false doctrine, they don't love you like they say they love you. Because everything that comes out of this pulpit is in the word of God. It's in the book. And if you can't get it out of the book, you don't want a taste of the word. That's sweeter than the honey from the honeycomb. 
Come on, his word, his word is shut up in my bones. That's where I get my strength. When I hear the truth, when I hear the truth. Ray, please. Here it is. Verse 30. Mine eyes, okay, how much more, if haply the people had eaten freely to the day of the spoil of their enemies which they found. He said, wait a minute, fellas. He said, you guys are still weak. And if you had tasted the honey like I tasted, you would know that I've been enlightened. I've got revelation. I've got strength. And I come to tell somebody, if you just dance like I've been dancing, if you just run an aisle like I've been running an aisle, if you just go to prayer meeting like I've been going to prayer meeting, you won't be worried anymore. You won't be bogged down anymore. You won't be weary anymore. I wish two or three more people are running out right now. Oh, it gets sweeter and sweeter. It gets better and better when the goodness of the Lord gets a hold of your troubles. Here it is. He said, how much more? How much more would we all all the people have happily eaten of the honey. And we could have overcame our adversary together. You know what Jonathan was saying? If Jonathan was preaching tonight in Souls Harbor, he would tell you that it's not enough for three, four, or five of us to get the victory. But God wants all of us to get the victory. I wish somebody was standing up with me right now because I'm done preaching now. He said, it's not enough for me to just get strength. He said, you got to grab your neighbor by the hand and say, hey, you got to get some of this too. Hey, step in the water with me. You got to get some of this too. Hey, come to the altar with me. You got to get some of this too. I wish you would grab a neighbor by the hand and say, hey, we're going to leave victorious. Hey, we're not going to go down by the hand of the adversary. There's honey in the light. Come on, I wish somebody would throw up your hands and pray right now. Come on, that's it. Yes. Come on, there's honey on the floor. Come on, that's honey on the ground. That's honey dripping and flowing. Come on, that's it. I wish somebody would pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, when you don't know it's a prayer, that Spirit of the Lord will get a hold of your hands. The Spirit of the Lord will get a hold of your mouth. The Spirit of the Lord will get a hold of your feet. I said somebody's getting victory right now. Come on, you ought to go to war right now. Thank you so much for joining us for service today on live stream. If you'd like to see more content from Souls Harbor, you can check our YouTube channel out. And if you'd like to know some details about the various ministries of Souls Harbor, you can see some of that on our website. We're praying for you and believing that God's moving on you and that his hand is going to work a miracle in your life.